Hey guys, welcome to a new episode of Pro Audio Loft. I'm Larry, head engineer of Bigfoot Studios, based in Rome, right in front of the Vatican, and we provide mixing, mastering, and production services. Now, I'm really happy to be back today. Uh, I was off for a little bit because of a lot of work, and, and then I had vacations yet. Yeah, audio engineers go on vacation. Um, but I'm really happy today to show you a new technique uh, that uh, I'm really uh, using a lot. I took the theory out of uh, Luca Pretolesi's approach. Uh, shout out to Luca, great guy. Um, and um, yeah, basically uh, I utilize a multiband compressor uh, and his approach on pushing and scooping the mid-range in order to get big bass and sparkly highs. Now, I made it my own, uh, I retweaked it my own way, and this, uh, this is a usually a technique that I use on really uh, bass-heavy tracks um, that really need a lot of punch, a lot of big uh, fat sound on the low end, but at the same time a lot of loudness. Because this approach really affects the RMS level, the dynamic range reduction you can get out of your limiter, and uh, uh, it makes the limiter uh, work better and pushes better into the limiter. So this is an approach that I really enjoy using with uh, EDM and bass heavy music. Um, in this case, um, uh, I divided the uh, bands into four different bands, really sub low end, mid low, mids and highs. Um, and uh, I'm going to show you the track that um, I'm, I will be mastering. Uh, it's out already, it's called Speaker. Um, I'll drop you a link below. And uh, I will show you what I heard when I uh, when I heard the mix down and how I, I got into it and how I decided to scoop it in this way. So let's get in on and listen to the drop of the track. This is just a snippet. Okay, great. So what I basically heard the first time that I heard the track um, was that uh, the kick and the low end uh, and the mid range uh, were working well enough and they were interacting very well. But when I was pushing into the limiter, I was getting too much mud because if we, if you can hear the track on the first very first bars when the drop is a bit drier you could hear those toms those uh, uh, really uh, uh, they have a sort of a bass toms so those they created a lot of resonance when pushing into the limiter and that prevented basically from getting RMS levels and at the same time from getting uh, a cleaner clearer uh, perception of the track so that's why I decided to work a lot on the low and mid-low frequencies. And uh, in this case, I um, pushed down the low end because the kick drum is really big in this mix. And uh, so I d decided to push it down with uh, some, I would call it heavy compression because this is in a mastering environment. Having this sort of compression is, is it's heavy compression, but it was needed, so may it had the job done. And uh, the same time, I was scooping uh, the mid low in order to get away with some of the rumble, which was causing a lot of resonance when pushing into the limiter. So this this sort of frequencies, which are very important for the groove of the track, but they needed to be tamed down a little bit. Then I, sc I 
barely compress the mid range, which were quite okay for my for my tastes, and I approach the high end in a very dynamic, moving way in the in the high end spectrum, and um, I was really happy with the results because I got I got I got the track moving, I got the track. Uh, feeling uh, alive in the high spectrum by utilizing a sort of uh, a fast attack and fast release uh, on the high end uh, that was uh, interacting really well with the high frequencies of the track so in this case and it made the whole the whole track move a bit better it was sort of a, a, a sort of like expansion slash compression approach but I was really happy with the result. Um, now, let's uh, have a listen uh, with the overall bands they're all on and how they uh, sound on the, uh, on the mix. So let's take a listen, with and without. <laughs> So basically, what I got out of this approach was I got more punch, I got a cleaner result in the mid-range, but I lost some low end. That's why I had this EQ right after my multiband compression. So I could push the low end a little bit and have more control on, on that exact set of frequencies. I usually do it with my Tegler uh, Dream, uh, which is a great machine I have in my mastering rack. But in this case, for the sake of science, I decided to use um, this plugin. Um, also, I utilize the concept of a smiling curve. Um, I want to I w in this track. I wanted to the, the the bass to feel big and the, the the high end to feel open, wide, and and and, and sparkly. Um, and uh, in this case, uh, in order to feel a bigger uh, smiley curve, so in this case that the low end feels bigger and the high end feels uh, op more open than, than it was before, I decided to boost with uh, some really simple um, shelves in the low end and the high end spectrum. So let's take a listen on how it sounds. Um, with and without. The whole low end comes to life, you get a bigger sense of energy out of the low end, which is great, and the high end gets a little bit more open, which is a, a result that I really wanted. Um, and now I'm going to show you how this technique uh, is affecting the actual loudness that you could get out of the limiter. Uh, I got, a, I used a digital clipper, and then going into a really simple Fab Filter Pro L. And in this case, it, this technique enabled me to have a better source coming into the limiter uh, with more scoot mids, more clarity, and so I could get more definition out of the limiter and have the limiter work better on the right frequencies. Um, so let's take a listen and uh, also take a look at the R RMS level that you could get out of this technique uh, in, in conjunction with the limiter. And uh, yeah, I'll show you uh, 
the um, final master with the Pro MB and the Equilibrium on and then you will hear how it will change dramatically in the mid-low and low frequencies um, when uh, when those two plugins are deactivated. So yeah, a really drastic difference in this case because um, you really get a sense of uh, cleaningness and clarity in the whole mix, but also you get more thump out of the kick, out of the bass, the bass is bigger, it gets fuller, and you get higher RMS levels, you could push the track higher, and the limiter works better. So. This is, of course, a technique that I use mostly on bass-heavy music and when the client requires a really uh, high level of RMS, a lot of pushing into the limiter, and uh, it's not always the case. So this is not a technique that you can apply in all genres of music. Uh, and most, of it, most importantly, you have to tweak with your, the tools you have at your disposal, play with your attack and release, different ratios, different compressors, and see what sounds best for you. Um, so this is not a golden rule, doesn't work on any on everything, it's just a technique that I like to use on, in this case, bass heavy stuff, really attacky fast stuff that needs a lot of punch, a lot of clarity, big bass, sparkling highs, and a lot of volume. Um, but again, uh, you make your t the choices at the end of the day, and what sounds better, it's, al it's always a correct technique, so... There's no right or wrong in audio. We get the job done no matter what technique we use. Um, I hope this technique was useful for you. Um, I'm happy to be back. And uh, yeah, if you could show some love for the to the page, subscribe it, like it, uh, hate it, love it, just comment below. Let me know what you think. Drop some comments. Drop me some messages. And feel free to use this technique and, and experiment with it. This is just a starting point. There's a whole world behind multiband compression. I hope this was useful. Thank you very much for your attention. I'll see you soon. And uh, take care. And let's get it on. Ciao.